Hello there. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Miss Major. I'm one of the ear, nose, and throat registrars. Hello. I would like to take a look at your voice box today using flexible nose endoscopy. Okay. Have you ever had one of these done before? No. Okay. I will talk you through the examination as we proceed. Okay. If at any point you want to stop me and ask a question, do let me know. All right. Okay. Is there any pain in the area of your nose or your throat at the moment? Uh, no. Okay. Once you've told the patient what you want to do with them, you need to make sure you've got the right equipment. For a flexible nose endoscopy, you need the flexible scope. You also probably need the local anaesthetic with some vasoconstrictor. I usually use cocaine alkane spray. You want a alco wipe and you want some jelly. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask my patient first if he's allergic to anything. Are you allergic to anything? No. I'm going to use a nasal spray to pop in your nose. What this does is it gives you a bit of local anaesthetic and it also vasoconstricts. It allows me to see your nose quite well. Oh. Sniff again and swallow. So what you'd like to do is wash your hands or use some alcohol gel, whatever you have in your clinic, and put some gloves on. This is your video endoscope. Um, some scopes have a video attachment along with a stack, and others just have an eyepiece that you'll look down. Most of the ones on the ward, um, or generally the ones that the ENT on calls will have, will just have the eyepiece. What you want to do is make sure that you're holding it correctly. You like to keep the, the actual button that moves the scope up and down on the top with your index finger, place your index finger on the bottom. As you push down, the scope will go down and as you pull up, the scope will go up. It has mobility of 90 degrees on either side. So you just want to make sure that it works Firstly, and that the light is on and make sure that you lubricate it adequately. So you want to lubricate with some jelly, making sure you don't get the tip. I always just check with an alco swab, the tip is clean and you either check with the eyepiece or look on your video stack. You're now ready to scope the patient. Right, so the scope will actually go into your nose and it will feel a little bit odd but it shouldn't hurt. If at any point it does, just raise your hand and I will stop. Okay? Alright. So what you can see is you can see the nasal hair. I'm going to introduce the scope. When you get into the nose, the septum is on the right and the inferior turban is on the left. So you're going to go try and go on the floor of the nose by bypassing the inferior turban. You can see the E station tube on the left hand side and the post nasal space. So I'm going to get you to stick your tongue out, pop it back in, tongue out, pop it back in. Well done. What I can see now is the epiglottis in view and also the base of tongue. If you get the patient to stick their tongue out, you can see the vellecula, which is good. And I'm going to get the patient to say E. E. Good. Take a nice deep breath and E again. E. You've got the arytenoids that are moving together and the vocal cords with the false cords next to it. You then get your fingers on the patient's nose and you get them to puff out. Good. And relax. And sometimes do it again. Good. And relax. Well done. You can see the piriform fossa on either side. You have another little look at the molecular, so stick your tongue back out again. Good. Nice, good look. And then coming back out. Well done. On the way out, what you can see is the septum again on the right. You've got the inferior turbinate and you've got the middle turbinate coming into view up there. So have a look on your way out. Once you've finished the procedure, you thank your patient, thank you very much, you. and you put your scope away. Clean the scope appropriately. Make sure you sterilise and document the process in line with your local trust policy. 
Some hospitals use Tristol wipes, so remember to fill in the documentation book and place the Tristol sticker in the patient's notes. This is the most important part of the examination, perhaps. Uh, you're going to document your findings. Make sure that you've got three identifications of your patient, their name, their hospital number and the date of birth. I start off by writing the time and the date. You write that it's a flexible nose endoscopy that you've performed and that verbal consent was obtained. You want to make sure that you've put down that you use caffeine alkane spray and your findings. So the first thing you can say is post-nasal space. There was nothing exciting in the post-nasal space, so I will put no abnormality detected. You then have a look at the epiglottis, which was also normal. The base of tongue, normal. The vellecula was also normal. You then want to look at the cord movement, so the cords. So they were mobile, and they moved quite equally, so they were mobile and equal. The arytenoids were okay. And we also looked at the piriform fossa, which was also normal. If you have anything in the nose, you can at this point write what you may have found in the nose. So this might include a nasal polyps, a septal perforation, or crusting within the nose. You have then written what you have done, which makes it easy for other clinicians who are looking at your notes to understand what you have seen through your investigation. If you have taken any photos, it would be appropriate to attach it at this point. You then want to sign your name off and write your GNC number. And you are done. You can thank your patient and continue with further management.